Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. Well, I'm still working through the plums that our neighbor gave us and he has more for us actually. And I'm getting ready to make another plum lemon ginger frozen smoothie. And even though this is very similar to the way I make popsicles and I have several videos of that, I did have people asking specifically for this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and share that today and if you're interested in the popsicle, in making it as a popsicle, you just do the same thing and pour it into the popsicle mold. I like to use the Zoku brand ones and let me show it to you real quick. This is what the whole thing looks like. I just pulled this out of the freezer. Uh, I've got a couple different types. This right here is the lemon ginger uh, plum that I already made and I'm making some more and then this is Gosh, I can't remember which one this one is. It's, I think it's blueberry something or other. <laughs> I think it's probably blueberry lemon. I like adding lemon to things like plums and blueberries because it just gives a little bit more flavor. But anyway, this is a really great popsicle mold, especially for kids, but Mr. Rain really likes these. And I'll go ahead and link to this below. And we have two of these, so I can always have plenty in the freezer for Mr. Rain. But I also like making them in glasses, in the half pint glasses, mason jar type glasses, or even just mason jars, and a good sturdy glass. And then we, I just eat it out of here with a spoon. And Mr. Rain does this too. If I, if I fill up all my popsicle molds and I still have more of my mixture made up, then I'll pour it in a, to a glass or two like this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up these plums and get all the pits out and I'm gonna put it in the blender. And what I'm wanting is a minimum of four cups because I would like to fill four half pint jars. One, a half pint is equal to eight ounces, which is one cup. This glass right here is one that we got at our local uh, nursery. And if I can find these online, I think they are available. I'll go ahead and link to them below. This is a made from recycled glass, and these are very sturdy. They're about as thick, at least, as a canning jar. And I really like these. They work well for uh, put making the uh, frozen smoothie. In. Typically, when I cut the plums, I will cut them like this, and then just twist it and pull the pit out like that. Sometimes it comes out smoothly, sometimes it leaves a little meat on there. And I make sure I have all the stems pulled off. So it works best if you follow this little line on the plums. Just slide your knife around there. And typically it's going to be a lot easier to get the pit out. Now you can throw your plum halves into your blender just like that. Depending on your blender, you may want to go ahead and cut each one in half again. Typically this is good enough. Since I have you right here, I'm going to go ahead and show you how I do the lemon. Now, make sure if you're going to use the peel that you get an organic lemon. That's what this is. If you're not concerned about using the peel, then a lemon is one of the uh, clean 15 and it's not a big deal. But if you're using the peel, go with an organic one. So I'm going to cut the lemon in half and then I just want to pull out my, uh, a lot of these big seeds. I don't worry too much if there's a few smaller seeds that get in there. Go ahead and cut it in half again. I like to cut the little ends off here of the rind. Picking out those seeds. And then go ahead and cut the, that half in half again. So you're going to only use about half of a lemon. You can use more if you want it really tangy. It's totally up to you. Now I leave the lemon peels on because I think it gives it more flavor as well as more nutrition. Now I'm just going to throw the lemon pieces in just like that into my blender. And I simply have an Oster blender. I've been using the same blender for probably about oh, 15 years. I went through so many blenders, expensive ones and cheap ones alike. And I, I, instead of investing in the big fancy ones that I know a lot of people like, I found the Oster to work great for me. I even bought a backup because at the time I could get them for $20. Now I think they're up to 30 or more for this same exact blender. I'll go ahead and link to it below, but this has always worked just great for me without having to spend $400 on a fancy blender. 
So it's a totally up to you. I mean, I did spend that much on a grain mill because I swear by that one, but for a blender, I'm happy with my Oster. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of the goat's milk that I get from a friend of mine. And if you have whipping cream, that's another really great option. I recommend going with the Organic Valley whipping cream but it can be really expensive and I don't always have it on hand so I typically go for the goat milk and with this I don't measure it out so you can see how full my blender is it's roughly up to four cups as it is I will be adding more fruit to this I just want to get it uh, started so that I can add more to it until I get it up to at least the four cup mark so to make sure this is going to blend well I like to add some of that goat milk in right away i don't measure it out i just go by looks so i'm going to put a little bit more in there okay and then to get a really since this is just milk and not whipping cream to make it a little richer i will often put a scoop of powdered whole powdered milk and right here i have whole goat milk i use both this or this my two favorites uh, my very favorite for flavor is, is a little more expensive. I'll link to all three of these below. But this is a really good one for price because you get, you get quite a bit for your money in, in comparison. It's non-GMO. It's hormone-free. It's whole milk. And, and you can get it on the Subscribe and Save program on Amazon and save even more. So that's one of my favorites. But I also really like the powdered whole goat milk by Meyerberg. And again, I'll link to this below as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my blender on and get this all mixed up really well. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm up to about three cups as is with the milk. Now, the other thing you want to consider is are you going to add any kind of sweetener? Uh, it depends on it. These are actually pretty tangy uh, plums as is. They're not super sweet. So I definitely like to add some kind of sweetener to it. Whatever sweetener you choose is totally up to you. I recommend coconut sugar and it's, you know, it's full of minerals. But if you're going to go with the coconut sugar, you want to make sure to add, you're going to probably need a little bit more to get the sweetness you want than you would use with the cane sugar. Now the other thing to keep in mind is how do you want your color to turn out? Typically I don't care. But for the sake of the video and the pictures I want to take here, I want a really nice color on this. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the organic cane sugar. Oh, and you can also use honey. Now, um, Glory Bee Blackberry Honey uh, that comes right here from the Pacific Northwest is my very favorite. It's a raw honey, and I will link to that below. I still have a bunch left, but I'm very frugal on it and save it for very special things because honey for us is a lot more expensive than getting organic sugar. So the amount of sugar you add again is going to be up to you. I recommend starting with a quarter of a cup and then tasting it from that point on. With the coconut sugar you're going to want to start with about a third of a cup. And then add in your ginger. Now if you're using powdered ginger I recommend going a whole tablespoon I use the dried organic powdered vin uh, ginger because uh, fresh raw ginger is really expensive, especially if you get organic around here, and it's not always easy to get a hold of, and it does not grow well here. If you're going to mm. use a fresh organic ginger, I recommend you know chopping it up. Well, just chop it up good enough to throw in the blender, and at least a tablespoon of the fresh though oftentimes I actually find fresh ginger to be stronger than the powder but I will link to the powdered uh, organic ginger that I buy below so now I'm going to turn my blender back on and mix in the spices and the sugar okay now it's time to go ahead and add some more plums until I get this as high as I want so I'm going to continue on finish cutting these up and then I'll taste it and see what I think about the sweetness level and possibly add a little bit more sugar if I need it. Now one thing you want to make sure that you do is you take a little rubber or silicone spatula and just scrape off your sides, especially since you may end up with some if you're using any dry ingredients like the milk powder or the ginger powder, or the, the ground ginger, just to make sure everything gets mixed in there real well and then run the blender for another spin and there you go 
And then all you want to do is just fill up your glasses. And by the way, since I made uh, six cups instead of just four, I did add more sugar. I added about that much again more sugar, about another quarter cup or so. And I put in almost another tablespoon of ginger. I think actually it was another tablespoon to get lots of flavor. And I fill them right up to, as if I was going to do some canning with these. It's typically how far I fill them. You don't want to fill them clear to the top. You want to allow for room for expansion as they're freezing. I'll just pour the rest in there. And one of those glasses. All right, and there you go. And now you're just going to take your glasses and set them in the freezer as is. Do not put a lid on them. And give it several hours up to overnight for it to freeze. Now, however long you allow this to chill or to freeze in your freezer is going to depend on the texture that you want. If you want it still kind of soft, like a soft ice cream, just a few hours. Go back and check it. Even take a spoon and stir it a little bit. And um, then when it's ready, you can go ahead and eat. We often just... Uh, Put them in there and let them sit for a full day until they're frozen solid. I like them soft, but usually I don't get to it <laughs> at that time. So if you let it sit overnight, it can sit in there for a couple days. It's going to obviously get much harder, so you'll take it out of your freezer. You want to let it sit for a few minutes, get a spoon, and then just start scraping it out of there. It's, it is kind of hard. It's not like ice cream at that point phase but it's really really good and we enjoy this all through the year not just on in the summer uh, not just in the warm months but all year round we really enjoy having a frozen fruit smoothie whether it be in the form of a actual creamsicle popsicle shape or in a glass like this and this is a great option if you don't have the money to go out and buy a popsicle mold or whatever, you can just use a canning jar. It doesn't have to be this shape. It can be the regular half pint size that's more straight and narrow, whichever one you like. I like this shape better when it comes to these for the canning jar. And then again, these ones uh, work really nice too. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new and that you'll give this recipe a try and also try some recipes of your own. It's really simple, just using whatever fruit and whatever sugar you want, whatever spices, if you want to add them in, and just play with it and have fun. It's super simple and it's a yummy treat. Thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.